Hello, my name is Dean Alhoss and today we are going to look at manufacturing accounts. Again, it's quite a large topic, this one, so um, the video may be slightly long. Do feel free to break it up into chunks um, and watch the video at different um, sort of starting points. So the first thing to make clear is the purpose of a manufacturing account, which fundamentally is used to calculate the equivalent of purchases uh, in a company that actually um, has a factory and makes its own goods. So what we're actually doing in our, in our manufacturing account is calculating the cost of producing the finished item. So let's say, for example, we made toy trains. We could buy them from a creditor or a supplier, I should say, on credit. Or if we have our own factory, we'll be making them. So instead of having um, purchases from outside, what you're going to have is the actual costs of production that you used to make the uh, toy trains. So the manufacturing account, as the name suggests, calculates the cost of manufacturing the toy trains in this case. It's worth pointing out a few um, common terms that are used when you get a question on manufacturing accounts. The first one is direct costs. Well, direct cost is a cost that is um, attributable, in other words, is payable by the factory that is actually making the toy trains. So in other words, the cost is direct. So a worker that is actually on the factory floor making the toy trains would be direct labor, for example. The materials that you use to make the toy train would be direct raw materials because they are directly involved in the factory manufacturing process. In other words, making the toy trains. Any indirect costs are also sometimes known as overhead expenses. And they are costs that you need to run the factory but actually are not necessarily costs directly involved in the production of the toy trains. So the example I always use with my students is you're obviously going to need cleaners to make sure that the factory is tidy and that the toilets are hygienic. Um, they're essential in terms of uh, making sure you um, are sticking to health and safety standards but they're the people who clean the factory are not directly involved in the production process so they would be seen as an indirect cost another example might be security uh, again you need them to safeguard the toy trains you're making and make sure that they're not stolen but the security guards are not directly involved in the production process Another common area that uh, causes quite a bit of confusion amongst students is this word apportionment. It's a strange word. It just simply means division. So how do we divide up the expenses between the factory and any other offices that you might have running a company? So typically, let's say you're making a, um, uh, you're making a set of toy trains. The factory really is only concerned with the cost of making the toy trains. You may also have, as part of the same business, an office where the managing director and the sales team work to market and sell the toy trains to the customers. You may also have an admin and a finance office. All right. So those are not necessarily directly linked to the factory, but they're still expenses. So if you're renting a whole premises, a whole area, and you've got part of that premises is the factory and then another part might be different offices for the marketing team and the finance team and the managing director. How do we divide up things like rent so that the cost is apportioned or is divided fairly between the factory and the other offices in the business? Well, the answer to that is the question will tell you <laughs> how it's going to be divided up. And what you then have to do is for expenses like rent, you have to make sure that you um, apportion them or divide them according to the percentages given to you. So I've got a quick example I've drawn up here. We can see that the rent for the year is $10,000. But it tells us in the question that the factory floor area is 70%. And the office floor area is only 30%. So what we would do is 70% of 10,000 is obviously 7,000. That cost in terms of that part or division of the rent would go to or go into the manufacturing account. And the other 3,000 would simply be put in your profit and loss account as a rent expense 
for the rest of the office, you know, for your marketing team and your director and secretary, admin and finance. There are a number of ways you can divide up an expense between the factory and other parts of the business. The most common is floor area. But you could also do it according to the number of workers. So the larger the number of workers, the more floor, uh, sorry, the more uh, rent in this example you would have to pay. And the third is they might just simply not tell you how they've decided uh, they're going to uh, divide it up, i.e. by floor area or workers. I'll just simply say 70% is to be paid by the factory and say 30% is going to be paid by the office in terms of the rent expense. So basically go with what the question says and then apportion or divide up the expense between the profit and loss account and the manufacturing account. Okay, so now on to the format of the manufacturing account. The first thing to remember is that we are actually working out the cost of making the toy trains in our factory. So all the costs are going to get added together. Okay, um, sometimes students get confused and uh, they think that uh, we are taking it away from sales. No, the manufacturing account is calculating the cost of production so the equivalent of purchases so in most cases you're going to be adding together the cost of the various materials and labor that you need to make the finished products okay so uh, of course in any factory we're going to have raw materials so again you op as you do with cost of sales you have an opening stock of raw materials which in this case is five thousand Plus you purchase the raw materials from your suppliers, which you're then going to use to make your toy trains. If you pay any carriages, costs of transport or bringing in the goods, again, that gets added to your cost. So in total here, our materials cost us $16,000 for the year. At the end of the year, we had 3,000 left. So that would obviously be minus, which means that the value of the materials that we used during the year was $13,000. The workers involved in actually making the finished products or the toy trains, the labor costs or wages was 6000 And all the expenses, the direct expenses, so usually that's things like uh, direct electricity may be associated with machinery um, and other expenses, maybe such as packaging, anything that's directly related to the actual toy trains cost 4000 Again, remember we're working out the cost here, so we add all these together to give us a prime cost or the cost of direct production. So the cost to actually make the toy trains was $23,000. Now there are no uh, extra marks here for cool new styles. You have to learn the format as it's laid out in this handout, I'm afraid. So in addition to the prime cost, we also need to add the overhead expenses, which are the indirect costs of running the factory. So here, the rent, the insurance, the depreciation of the machinery that's um, involved in actually making the toy trains, and the electricity, presumably, this is to light the factory, so it's not necessarily directly involved in making the goods but obviously you need lights to be able to see what you're doing in the factory um, is 6,000. So we've got 7,000 rent, 2,000 insurance, 1,000 depreciation with the electricity of 6,000. Again, it's the cost that we're working out. So when we add all this together, it comes to a total uh, factory overhead expenses, i.e. indirect expenses of 16,000. We add that to the prime cost, the direct cost of making the toy trains, and it gives us 39,000. Now, a lot of students stop at that stage and they forget. We also have something known as a work in progress, and keep it simple. A work in progress basically means a half finished item, so it would be a half finished toy train. Again, we look at the half finished toy trains or items at the beginning of the year, which was 9,000. We assume those are made because they are the opening work in progress inventory. In other words, they are the stock of half finished goods at the beginning of the year. Well, of course, in your factory, the first thing you're going to do is finish them off. So we add those to the 39,000 to give us now a total cost of production of 48,000. And all the half finished toy trains that we count that we have at the end of the year, the closing work in progress, we would take away because they're not finished. 
so therefore we can't count them as a cost. And that leaves us with the production cost of 41,000. And that's basically the manufacturing account. Um, what we're saying is that rather than going to our supplier and buying the toy trains finished from our supplier, we've made them in our own factory. And in this case, the toy trains have cost us $41,000 exactly to make. So once we've calculated the production cost of goods completed of $41,000, we simply use that number instead of purchases. So the rest of the income statement, the trading account and the profit and loss account looks exactly the same. So we have our sales and then we have our opening stock of finished goods, our closing stock of finished goods. But instead of this purchases figure, which would normally be here, we simply transfer the 41,000 and we put it at the production cost of goods completed. In other words, this is the value of the goods that we made in our factory, in this case, 41,000. Opening stock plus purchases, or the equivalent of production cost of goods completed, gives me 4,000 plus 41,000. And then any closing stock of finished goods we would take away from the 45,000 to give us a cost of goods sold of 37,000, which we then take away from sales to give us our gross profits. And the expenses will be divided up as the um, apportioned figures that we discussed earlier on. And again, all that information in terms of how you divide up the expenses uh, that aren't directly linked to the factory will be given to you in the question. So here we've got rent of a thousand, we've got electricity of 500, insurance of two and a half thousand, salaries of 4,000, add those together, it gives me 8,000. We take that away from my gross profits to leave me with a net profit in my profit and loss account of 35000